Welcome to the U World Order Showcase Podcast. Your host, Jill Hart, the coach's alchemist. Couldn't be more excited to have you join us today. On this podcast, we celebrate the champions of change, the up and coming life, health and transformational coaches who are fearlessly stepping forward to make a difference in the world. Get ready for inspiring stories, practical tips, and powerful moments that will motivate you to make a positive change in your life and those around you. We're happy to have you join us on this incredible journey as we dive into the world of life, health, and transformational coaches who are lighting up the path towards a better tomorrow. Welcome to the U World Order Showcase podcast. We have with us today Cheryl A. Major, who is a health coach, here to share with us how healthy eating can change your mind and body. And she's also the host of a podcast, Major Health Tips in Digestible Bites. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Cheryl. It's nice Thank to have you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here and have this conversation with you, Cheryl. So we're going to talk about all things eating and health and mind and body, but we are also going to talk about sheep because they're so cute and yours are adorable. (laughs) I'm glad you like them. I love them. They're little woolly bundles of joy for me. They are. And it's like spring is the the most magical time of the year. I had a lot of goats. Mostly we did goats, but it was just like, about now they'd start being born and we'd have they and they're just so darn cute they yeah. bounce all over the place and yeah yeah mine are all rescues i've had sheep for 20 years uh-huh. and i have six now and they were rescued from the slaughterhouse mm-hmm. and so they got the life they have the life of riley here my neighbor used to call it the sheep sheraton over here <laughs> so <laughs> they they live better than i do but uh, no, sheep are amazing. They just, they don't get enough credit. They all have different personalities and different voices. And they recognize people and they learn commands and they know. I mean, when I go out, I say, Maggie, take the boys around. And the leader takes the boys around so I can take the two who need a little extra food in by themselves. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. They know their names. I have one who goes for car rides. Uh-huh. I have one who gets walked in the back. Then one of my neighbors said to me, you know, Cheryl, the other day I was working at my desk. I looked up and there was a sheep walking by. So, <laughs> hey, Animals are so amazing. And we just yeah. don't, and you know, we, most people stop with dogs or cats yeah. and, and, and they're, they're cool. I, you know, I have dogs and cats and, yeah. but other animals, they're just like, they they're all unique they just they have Mm -hmm. their own personalities they Mm -hmm. may be sheep but they're like sheep with this certain name and they have like characteristics that are unique to them and they're just even chickens are like that i I mean it's just like i've i've heard that i've never had chickens I, i i've wanted chickens we have a bumper crop of hawks around here so i have decided to err on the side of caution and uh, not get them, but um, I've I've seen where they're so affectionate and they recognize people, and it's just we don't give animals nearly enough credit or enough. No, so, yeah, yeah, I yeah. I I totally believe that. Yeah. Thank you for and appreciating that... them. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I I was telling you before I lived mm-hmm. on a homestead, and it was it was a, a time in my life that I manifested it. And it was, it was such an amazing experience. It was everything I had hoped it would be. I learned wow. so many things and, and got to practice um, doing things in a way that was much slower than, you know, life normally is for people. Mm-hmm. It was, it was a really special part of my life. I can so. understand that. And, and 
it kind of co coincides with healthy eating because when you live on a homestead and you're living closer to the land, um, food food takes on a different different experience for you rather mm -hmm. than you know going to the grocery store and just picking whatever is offered as a food source, which mm -hmm. often isn't. Oh yes. Oh. <laughs> Get me started. <laughs> I do want to get you started. Let's okay. get you started. Okay. <laughs> Tell us all about it. How did you get started? How did I get started? Well, it goes back more years than I will admit to when I was 12 and I got depressed and I started crying all the time and nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And it went on and on and on. And eventually I learned to hide it and I dragged it around and, and I hid it throughout most of my Teen years of my adult life. And I got to the point to fast forward, I got to 2012 and I was on the West Coast at a family wedding. And uh, my husband had been having some issues with side effects and we couldn't figure out what was going on. He had um, memory loss and um, brain fog and he was borderline diabetic. He had neuropathy, he had muscle weakness. I mean, it was a whole, it was a just a, a plethora of, of bad stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And he had a really bad event out there. He'd get waves of, of really dark periods where he'd just have to go to bed and it happened out there. And we said, what is going on? Well, the only thing he was on was a statin. Mm -hmm. So we decided to Google the side effects of statin and he turned out to be the poster child for side effects. I mean, if there were 49 side effects, he had 48. So when we came back, we said, okay, we've got to back you off the the pre-diabetes. They would have called it today back in 2012. Mm -hmm. They weren't really using that term, I don't think. Um, but he had to test his sugar twice a day, prick his finger. And we had to um, normalize his cholesterol because his family uh, has a history of heart disease and diabetes, which is why he was on the statin. So we read Mark Hyman's book, uh, The Blood Sugar Solution. We just happened to see him on a PBS special. And it rang true and we ripped the Band-Aid off and we went through the pantry and the fridge and the freezer and the cupboards and we got rid of sugar, flour, dairy, anything with preservatives, anything in a box, anything that you would put in the microwave. We got rid of the microwave. Microwave gone. <laughs> the hood in so that we could cook even more. And the interesting thing was that, and I had been on and off depre um, depressive, uh, antidepressants throughout this whole period mm -hmm. of, of my, you know, my adulthood for many years. Mm -hmm. And in about six months, he started to normalize with his sugar and his cholesterol. But what was really a miracle for me was I wasn't depressed anymore. I wasn't mm -hmm. depressed anymore. And the reason I knew it was that next fall when I was driving, I looked out over um, over a reservoir at the foliage. I live in New England and mm -hmm. there was this beautiful foliage and I had terrible, terrible uh, seasonal affective disorder. And I would just want to crawl in a hole and throw the dirt over me when fall came because I, it just did a number on me. And I looked out over the water and I said, oh my gosh, those trees are so beautiful. And it caught me up short because I said, oh, I'm not depressed. I knew this by now and I'm appreciating fall. And I actually can look forward to fall now. And that's what happened. And I said, you know, this is just too good. And each of us lost 20 pounds when we got rid of all the junk. We weren't mm -hmm. trying to diet. We just lost yeah. 20 pounds. And I said, this is too good. I, I, I just, I can't, I can't keep this to myself. And I had been thinking about starting an online business and thinking about writing a book. So I did both. And I've been teaching and training and creating courses. I've written two books. I'm writing a third. And I'm on a mission to share with people that it doesn't matter what their issues are. Everything can be helped by changing what you put in your body. Because if your body's saying, you know, stop it, stop it, it manifests as inflammation. And the beautiful thing about this is, is called epigenetics, actually. I mean, your gene pool is your gene pool, but you don't have to be 
another person in your family who gets cancer, another person who's overweight, another person who struggles with depression, mental illness, whatever. It's what you eat. It's your environment that turns those genes on or off. So you have tremendous power, tremendous power. And it's so important that people understand this because I think that the processed food companies have stolen our power and as have the pharmaceutical companies and the insurance companies and the allopathic doctors, allopathic meaning traditional and not based in nutrition or functional or, you know, holistic stuff. And we get caught up in that and you take a ticket and you, you're on the ride, baby. And it's very hard to get off. So I'm on a mission yep. to help as many people as I can. That is awesome. My story. Our stories are like so similar. Really? <laughs> We ditched the microwave. My husband was a truck driver for a lot of years. And you would think that, you know, truck drivers, they tend to have a life expectancy of about 55 years. And, I did and not he's, know that. Yeah, it's, it's a really unhealthy occupation. Mm -hmm. Most of them are way overweight. They live on junk, junk food. food. And um, we did, we did, I have always cooked, you know, on a homestead I know how to can and preserve mm -hmm. food and um I it was just like when he came home came off the road we threw out the microwave and he he was even complaining a couple of weeks ago that he wanted me to go back to making tortillas from scratch again like I make our own bread I'm a really good baker yeah, I guess you are <laughs> I guess you are I can make artisan bread better than you can buy in a store anywhere except I France. want some now. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's so easy to make. I mean, I, it took me many, many years, maybe decades to learn how to do it. And now it's just like, it's consistently amazing. Awesome. And it's so easy. Um, but that's a show, different show. Anyway, it's it, it really does make a difference about what you're putting into your body. He got off the blood pressure medicine because he was his blood pressure is like up and down, up and down, up and down. Yep. And you have to meet this artificial standard. And it is an artificial standard when they take your blood pressure. Yeah. Um, and they never take it correctly. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there is a way to take it, but they never do it that way. And um in order to pass the physical to be a truck driver, he had to reach this certain standard. And then he's got this white coat syndrome going on yes. because it, his, his job depends on him being able to pass this physical. So, you know, it's through the roof. Yeah. Um, so he, he's off all blood pressure medicine and the blood yeah. pressure medication was making him like dizzy and tired and cough yes. and it was yes. just like all of these things yeah. that come along with it yeah. that you don't think about and mm -hmm. every time you take a pharmaceutical drug there is there's a side effect and yep. drugs and food are so tightly related that they're under the same umbrella in the government the food and drug, and drug. administration it's not one or the other, it's both of them combined. And they used to be the Department of Chemistry. That was the original I title. I did not know that. Interesting. Oh, so interesting. So it should uh, be that because Frankenfood is. It's just chemicals. <laughs> food, the food that you buy, processed food that you buy in the grocery store. And I'm talking like stuff that's covered in other stuff. Um, chips, you know, those flavored chips oh, it's yes. it's a toxic chemical that they put on there that's designed to keep you eating and to bypass your satiation mechanism and it has a side effect to your yeah. body it Absolutely. does something to you just like taking a pharmaceutical drug and it, it, it's it's just like taking anything into your body it's going to have a side effect and whether it's a good side effect or a bad side effect really depends on how your body is designed to process it. Yep. So I, you cut out wheat and gluten and you want to talk about that? What, what that does to the body? <laughs> well, it's interesting because, I mean, if you have celiac disease, it'll kill you. Mm -hmm. um, if you are non-celiac gluten sensitive, 
then it will give you heart palpitations or make you stuffy or um, you know, cause depression. It will amp up your inflammation and manifest in, in, in some particular way. Um, I do occasionally eat gluten, eat eat uh, bread because I, I absolutely love it. It doesn't love me back, but I do love it. And if, if, if it's people think that when they when that that they can never have anything again, they can never have a cookie again. They can never have an ice cream cone again. They can never have a piece of pizza again. And that's not what I teach. It used to be what I teach. And then I had somebody say, Cheryl, if this is what I have to do, I, I, I won't do it. It's just too hard. And that was, you know, oh, light bulb goes off. And if I really wanted to help people, I have to have them understand that it's most of the time you do it this way. And then mm -hmm. once in a while, you can do it this way. And that seems to make it more of a safe place for people to wrap their heads around it and think maybe it can make a difference in their life. So I, occasionally I do eat gluten. I do really try to eat sourdough because sourdough, if you're sensitive to gluten, gluten sourdough is easier to digest but and mm -hmm. and uh, gluten also um i saw something just the other day and it was just a tile on my laptop and i didn't look at it but um amyloid plaques in the brain are believed to be um to to be ca uh, uh, ca causery, ca uh, causes of um Alzheimer's, dementia, that kind of thing. And I saw something the other day saying, um, no, no, it's not. It's not amyloid plaque. I didn't look at it. So I don't know if, if they're starting to um, massage that a little bit, but I figure I need all my brain cells that I can and, I, and, and is in, as intact as I can. So I, I do avoid gluten um, as much as possible, as much as possible. And it's not, it's not all that hard. I mean, I have found, I don't bake my own bread, although I used to make my own gluten-free bread. Um, I've been buying Share, with S C H A with a numlaut over it. R. It's a German company, mm -hmm. and you can get that in a lot of stores. And it's gluten free, and it actually doesn't taste like dirt. It tastes like bread, <laughs> and it behaves like bread. So much. Like, I remember. Did you ever try to eat the rice bread? The rice bright uh, rice bread. Oh yuck! It's just yeah. It's it's not edible. It really isn't. But but the Share is is quite good, and I know a lot of people like the Ezekiel bread, but. I found that getting off gluten really helped and getting off dairy and sugar. Um, I mean, I love sugar. Again, it doesn't love me back. So it's a choice. It's a choice, but people have to understand what the choices are and how to move the stuff that's going to make them sick and old before their time off their plate one bit by one bit and replace it with something good if they're really into you know, the McDonald's drive through then that's a bit of that's a bit of of a challenge, and I I have found I have one client I'm working with, and she agrees with me, and then I see her eating a bag of potato chips while we're talking that has the the sour cream and onion sprayed on it, so it's hard. It it, it I find it challenging to help people without telling them they're wrong because i want to say you're wrong you're killing yourself stop it but that doesn't work it's just human nature you know there's resistance to that so it's a little bit of finessing that has to be done mm -hmm. and i'm i'm getting better at it um it also depends upon where the person is some people come to me and they got it i mean they got it going on and they just want to be more plant-based and they want help with that they want recipes and how do i do this and how do i do that mm -hmm. and then you have other people who weigh more than 300 pounds they are not mobile and they they need to save their lives and so that's a whole different thing so it, it, it's it's very interesting i've found that um working with somebody for for less than 90 days really doesn't work because it takes 90 days for people to see results and for people to kind of get with the flow in the program. I had one woman I worked with um, a few months ago and her goal was to lose 20 pounds in 90 days and she lost 18. I call that a win. I call yeah. it a win. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a very interesting process. It's a very um, challenging process because of 
the different angles you have to, you have to kind of get a sense of somebody and what they're up for handling and what is going to put them off and how stark you can be. Kind of what their addictions are. Because exactly. we, Thank they you, get yeah. addicted to foods like soda yeah. pop is mm -hmm. a huge one that people start that addiction really early on. And it's no wonder teens are overweight. I know. Uh, it, there's just, e even if they're drinking diet soda, which is, is worse in my opinion. It's worse. It is worse. It is worse. Because uh, it, it, it causes you to want to eat more food. Exactly. Uh, it, because you're, they, your, your body perceives it as being even sweeter than sugar. Mm -hmm. And if you tend toward depression, one or two servings of an artificial sweetener can send you into a, a depressive mood. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's just, and, and it does, it does mess with your hunger hormones. So you don't, your brain doesn't get the message from the leptin saying, Hey, we're hungry. We're, we're full down here. It's time to stop eating. And mm -hmm. people overeat and they don't get cued by their body as they should. Hey, we're full. So, and that's another thing that I like to teach. Um, it's a blue zones thing from, from Okinawa. Mm -hmm. It's Harahachibu. Um, Dan Butner, the blue zones and um, pushing away from the table when you're 80% full, not eating until you're full and certainly not eating until you're stuffed and just pushing away and waiting 15 minutes because people, especially if their hormones are messed up because of how they've been eating, it's going to take 15 or 20 minutes anyway for your brain to get the message that, hey, we're okay. We're good down here. We're not hungry anymore. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to work with them to have them try it and just see. And then if they're hungry, they can go back. They can go back. There's nothing that says you can't go back for, for more. And what I suggest is if you go back for more, take it and then look at what you've got on your plate for a second, start helping and put half of it back. Because we always, almost always overestimate what we should be or eat mindlessly. That's another huge thing. I mean, don't you find that, and I do it too, you're I'm stuffing my face and I'm checking emails or looking at my phone or, you know, and, and, and so, so that's something mindful eating, mindful eating is really and changing the size of your plates and dishes. Oh, yes. Like yes. Yes. I'm, I'm big on when we have dinner, we have several, several plates yeah. on the table. <laughs> There's a plate for the main thing and it's small yeah. and there's a big thing for the salad. Yes. And there's salad Bravo. with every meal because yes. that's how I was raised. You yeah. just eat salad. And, and then there's, there's a plate for bread because I hate it when my husband puts the bread on the tablecloth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I do make my own bread, as we said before. Yeah, so it's it's sourdough, and it's it's I buy high quality flour. I, I'm I'm kind of a snob about flour. Um, and and what do you get? What kind of flour do you get, and where do you source it? I'm curious. I get King Arthur flour, and it's local. Oh. It's it's available nationwide, but it's yeah. I I'm pretty sure it's grown here in oh. I, or in Utah at least. Um, yeah. There's a mill down there um, and they have really high quality flour. Nice. And so I'll use that. And I've had my yeast going for years and years and years. And it's, it's my pet. His <laughs> name is Fred. I had a ginger bug going for a while. So I had Fred and ginger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, that's super. It was fun. But yeah, it, it, just little tricks that you can play with your mind. You know, yeah. you don't have to have everything on your plate. And and if you, you know, eat more vegetables, if you put more vegetables on your plate and less of the, maybe if you're having pasta or rice yeah. or whatever your other thing is, then you, you're not going to be tempted to eat so much of that. Whereas you can have a lot more of the Right. And don't you find that the experience of eating is so visual mm -hmm. that if you're putting smaller servings on a big plate, you look at it and you say, meh, I'm not going to, this is not going to fill me up. But if you put those same servings on a smaller plate 
and visually you say, oh, that's an abundant plate. That looks really good. It's a whole other trick your mind kind of thing, I find. So, yeah. I, yeah. That's, that's a, it's a big, it's a big deal. Yeah. What your mind thinks about something. And then if you eat with really skinny people, like my daughter, who's like, <laughs> she's going to turn 20 here soon. And she's, she has a way of eating that she always leaves a third of my <laughs> give her. Really? There's an old Japanese um, tradition that you should never clean. You should never clean your plate. You should always leave a little bit left over for the gods or something. Interesting. I forget who it was for, but yeah, somebody, somebody else. <laughs> it, it, it's an offering. Maybe it was to Buddha or something. I I forget, but it was basically, you know, you don't have to stuff yourself. It's okay to leave a little bit. And my dogs appreciate it. <laughs> or my chickens. Or your chickens, yes. I'm sure the dogs really appreciate it. And they'll eat vegetables. It's really weird. <laughs> well, that's good. Do you have two dogs? I have two dogs, yeah. A, an old dog whose name is Pudge, and he grew into his name. We thought it was funny when he was little because he was skinny, but wow. now he's old and fat. And they call him the square dog. My grandkids do. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're a grandmother. You don't look old enough to be a grandmother, Jill. <laughs> I, I definitely am. Oh, well, congratulations. Lucky you. Thank you. Um. So how do people work with you? Do you work in groups? Do you do one-on-one -on -one coaching? How does that look? I do both. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and I've recently started a group coaching. I had people who were asking me if I would do a group, group coaching situation. So I am two weeks into the first iteration of the Healthy Eating Club 90-day program. And I will be starting that up again is my intention in April. So I'm putting together... Um, Kind of a, a wait list situation and i'd be mm -hmm. happy to to send you that information once i've got it set up and yeah. it's um it's three classes a month and four open office hours a month so people can just drop in with if they need some coaching and they did or they didn't want to talk about something at you know the group <laughs> meeting 24 hour access to me and i share recipes i'm always developing recipes and I mean, for me, a recipe in a book is just a place to start. Yeah. You know, I, I always <laughs> change it. It's like, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add this, or I don't want to do cilantro. I'm going to do parsley or something like that. So um, so I'd be happy to, to to send that off to you when it, when it's when it's ready to rock and roll for the, uh, the wait list. But, and, and then I do create courses and I have people come into my community that way. And I have, I have two blogs. I have thinstronghealthy.com and I have majorupbeatme.com. And, and I, you have another course. Yes, I have another course. I have a course, uh, Embrace Optimism. And yeah, and you know, I mean, isn't it something that we need to do these days for so many reasons? And Just some days- For our mental health, for, for one thing. Health. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And some days it's really hard to be optimistic when things just, nothing seems to be going right and you're just feeling really low. And so I put this together and it's, um, there's a webinar and there's a report and I have a, a, a food and journal that I share. And there are also some images and some quotes as well. And there's also a checklist that people can go through and just kind of check off to see how optimistic they really are. Because some of us think we're, we're, you know, we're really down in the dumps. Maybe not so much. Maybe just, you know, we're having a problem, an issue with that or that person or something like that. So I put that together. And I would love to share that with your community if that's something that you think they might be interested in. It's very simple to visit. It's embraceoptimism.com. And of course, I have a coupon for your peeps. And the coupon is Jill29. Capital J. Capital J, capital I, capital L L 29. Okay. J I L L 29. And the, the that brings the price of the entire course down to $20. Okay. 
Awesome. Well, yeah. I'll make sure that I put the links in the show notes, but also the coupon code in the show notes so okay, people wonderful. could take advantage wonderful. of that. That's yeah. awesome. That'd be super. And yeah, optimism is one of those things that if you're looking for it, the world to be better, you'll find evidence. If yeah. you're looking for the world to be a terrible place, you'll find evidence for that too. I know. And isn't it a constant, I don't say constant battle, but it, it, we're, we're a, a work. Yeah. It's a choice. And, and we're, we're, we're a work in progress in every way, our health, our, our mental health, our attitude. Um, and it's so interesting to, to change how you think and see what happens and also to watch how you fall back into your old patterns um, that I find really fascinating and it's, it's tantalizing too, because as soon as you start to change, you get uncomfortable because it's the unfamiliar, different stuff for you. And that romances people into going back to the easy stuff that probably isn't in their best interest to visit. So you, you can't, you can't stop. I mean, people, people say to me, are you ever going to retire? And I say, no. I mean, why would you <laughs> want to sit and do crossword puzzles and nothing else? I mean, it, it, there's so much to do and learn and see and be and, and create and share. And it's, it's just a wonderful adventure. And I certainly have no intention ever of just, you know, falling in that hole that I did feel like doing years ago. It's a whole new life. People need to understand that if they're craving change, if they're craving a new life, whether it's weight, health, um, diabetes, arthritis, um, depression, what, whatever, you can, you can affect tremendous change. You Even your financial disposition. Yes, yes, absolutely. And absolutely. changing the way you eat actually does affect your finances. Yes. If you learn how to use leftovers efficiently, yep. you can save gobs of money on your food bill. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's another thing that I do teach people. I teach them to make a lot of, um, I have a rice and lentil and bean mixture mm -hmm. that I have in the fridge all the time. And I don't view it as leftovers. I view it as something that I'm going to use. I use it for breakfast. I can have a few spoonfuls for a snack. I use it on a salad. I put some in a soup that was getting a little thin. And I said, I'm going to put some of this in there because you've got your beans and your grains. So you have a complete protein if you're looking to do more of a vegetarian plant-based mm -hmm. diet. So, uh, and I'm happy to ship that recipe off to you too, Jill, if, if, if you'd like to share that with people. I mean, I, I'm, I'm open to sharing whatever. I'm just trying to spread the word and make a difference because there's so much that people can do. And I just want them to know, I want to empower people to make change and to be the best that they can be because it's a, it's a, it's a gas. It, it's just a, it's a wonderful adventure when you, you realize how you can change your life and your health and your mental health. It's just so inspiring and fun. It is really fun. Yeah. It's like, why stay the same when you could have an adventure and you don't even exactly. have to leave home? <laughs> yep. Exactly. Exactly. You it all it starts right in your yourself. head. Right yeah. Yourself. <laughs> I embraced sobriety a while back. It's been almost five months now. Exactly. I haven't missed it at all. Exactly. Other people around me drink. And yeah. it's just like, I don't, nah, I don't want it. Not anymore. Not anymore. That, that time has passed. And it's not even like I can't drink. I wasn't like I had to stop drinking. It's yeah. just, That's it's right. just something that I chose yeah. to do. And I continue to make that choice because I like the benefits of it. I mean, I, as you start seeing benefits from the decisions that you make, it makes yes. making that decision a lot easier. Yeah. What are the benefits that you personally are seeing from that change? Well, I lost 15 pounds just right off the bat because, yeah. you know, I don't drink soda pop. Good. So, you know, it was like wine was the thing that was doing it to me. Yeah. I can't drink beer because it gives me gout oh. and I don't really like hard liquor. So mm -hmm. it was just wine. Yeah. And, and I have rosacea really bad. Um, and it's, it's 
almost totally cleared up. It, I can't like, even, I would never believe that. Looking at I'm 63. Oh, you look fabulous. Yeah. Look <laughs> Zoom fabulous. is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I no, love Zoom. <laughs> no, you look good. I know I do too, but you look great. Well, thank you. I'm a lot of it has to do with, you know, just making good decisions about yep. what I eat and how I exercise yep. and, uh, you know, those yeah. and what I think about your mental health, what you think about really impacts how your life is going. Mm -hmm. And you always have the choice to choose a different thought. You don't have to just like take the take the one that your brain serves up. <laughs> I know because it's probably the same one you were thinking yesterday that wasn't serving you then either. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's so brain. interesting. Next. So, I, know. <laughs> I know. I think I want to choose a different thought today. Yeah. Different thing to focus on. And you're free to do that. Yes. And you can make up yeah. your past. If you don't yeah. like the past that you had. That's that a you good point. Ruminate you on know, and you can just make up a new one. I had not thought of that i love that i absolutely love that joe that's that's it's my aha for our time together today that's wonderful you can create your own past just you know, rewrite it yeah they say that 50 percent of what you remember is not accurate anyway so it's it's more than that because no yeah. two people experience the event the same way that's true and so it it doesn't matter how you how you phrase it in your head how you remember it you can change how you remember it yeah. it could one thing could have been like so important to you at the time that you've carried it with you all these years but if you just like tell yourself a better lie as Marissa Pierce says <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm just gonna decide that I'm going to remember it this way and I'm mm. going to pick something really positive about the experience. And that's what I'm going to hang on to. I like and eventually your brain will just be like, yeah, that, well, that's how it was. Yeah. And it, it not only changes how you feel about the situation, but anybody else that was involved in the situation who remembers it differently as you're relating it to them, it make, helps them change how they perceive the event so yeah. you could take something that was really not that great and make it make it a wonderful event i like that a lot <laughs> thank you for that jill you are so welcome <laughs> no charge oh, thank you. <laughs> i like that even better <laughs> so cheryl this has been a gas you want to leave the audience with your final thoughts the one thing that you really hope they take away from our conversation I hope they really take away from this conversation what you just said and that they, they can rewrite their past. I think that is so powerful. And if I can just add on to that, that they can rewrite their present and their future by changing what they eat and changing what's in their environment and changing their thoughts. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for this Thank time with you, me. Jill. I hope we talk again. This was wonderful. Thank it you. was fun. Thank you so much for tuning in to another empowering episode of the You World Order Showcase podcast. We hope you've enjoyed hearing from our incredible life, health, and transformational coaches who are making a profound impact on the world. Remember, change begins with you, and you have the power to transform your life and the lives of others. If you want to take that next step and unlock your true potential, visit thecoachesalchemist.com where you can find the three ways we can help you for free to spin your talent into gold with clarity, a system, and a plan. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an inspiring episode. And if you enjoyed today's show, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback means the world to us and helps us reach more people with our positive message. Stay connected with us on social media for updates, behind the scenes content, and upcoming guest announcements. You can find us on Facebook at the U World Order or simply visit thecoachesalchemist.com.